What is going on everybody, Jonathan here. If you are new to the channel, I cover everything related to the gig economy, rideshare, and other side hustles. So for those of you that don't know, I actually originally started driving for Lyft back in 2015, and I was doing this part-time. I actually had a full-time desk job, but I was getting bored of all the paperwork and the nine to five stuff. I kind of wanted to like get out, do something different. So I started driving for Lyft doing peak time, uh, just, you know, like the real prime time hours when it was busy after work, kind of giving people rides home when they were on their commute. And it was really good. The money was good. I enjoyed the experience and I really liked driving other people around. And I completed a lot of rides on the platform. I did over 400 rides between 2015 and 2016. And yes, it was a part-time thing for me, but I was doing it a lot part-time. So it was really a hustle. Uh, not just a small side hustle. Lyft actually uh, sent me this glow stash, you know, after I completed, I think it was 100 rides at the time. It was actually pretty easy to get. And it was kind of cool just to know, you know, that they had something, some sort of reward for drivers. And I really liked having it displayed on my dashboard because it showed passengers that I was legit. They do see your ratings. They see how many rides you've given in the app, but it was nice just to have that out there, something to showcase as a Lyft driver. So after doing this for a while, I actually started a rideshare blog at the ridesharepanel.com and that kind of started taking up more of my time. So I started driving less and doing more of the online stuff. But I wanted to reflect back on whether or not I would drive for Lyft in 2019 because driving for Lyft in 2019 is very different than it was back in 2015. A lot of things have changed. There are now options to rent vehicles and you can do so very flexibly, but there have also been a ton of rate cuts so you don't get paid quite as much per mile when you're driving for Lyft in 2019. We used to have prime time, which is kind of like a surge bonus where if it was really busy out, you would get a multiplier and you would multiply that by your rate to determine how much you were making. And you could make a lot uh, if it was you know bad weather or really busy due to like a sporting event and you just went out and started driving. That amount that you were getting paid was really amplified. But this has now been replaced by personal power zones, which adds up quite a bit differently for drivers. And one other big difference is that uh, the power driver bonus, which used to be an awesome feature, it kind of lets you take home more of your earnings. Right now, uh, Lyft takes a certain percentage of your earnings, but if you gave a certain amount of rides during uh, peak hours and had a uh, minimal acceptance rate, then all of a sudden you were taking home a higher percentage and also getting a cash bonus. This has now been replaced by streak bonuses, and these are unique to every single driver. They're a little bit easier to get. It usually requires uh, less. You don't have to be giving like a ton of rides every single week. They're on a smaller scale, uh, but they don't really add up quite the same. So there's a reason why I'm doing all of this re-examining. Recently, a friend asked me if I'd give him a referral code uh, because I used to do a lot of referring for drivers to Lyft. And I asked him why he wanted to sign up for Lyft because I actually studied accounting with this guy in school and uh, he graduated about the same time I did. He's currently working as a controller at a tech recruiting firm. He's almost done with his CPA and he'll be looking at potentially becoming a CFO somewhere once he finishes that up. Uh, so the fact that he asked me about driving for Lyft kind of surprised me. Uh, I was expecting him to be 100% focused on that CFO goal because if you become a CFO, well, you can take a Lyft Lux like just about anywhere. You don't have to be driving Lyfts. They will drive you everywhere. So the fact that he wanted to be driving for Lyft as you know, opposed to just focusing on this one goal and uh, upping his income level significantly really surprised me. So here's how he responded. Currently, he has about a 30 minute commute to and from work and they're from very busy areas. So he hits a decent amount of traffic and he wants to use that Lyft destination ride filter to get him very targeted rides so that he's not going too far out of his way, but he's also monetizing that time while he's driving. So he's not gonna be adding a ton of wear and tear to the vehicle, but he is gonna be making a little bit of cash while he's driving to and from work. And then he said he also wanted to drive, you know, occasionally here and there, maybe on a weekend, maybe when it's really busy out, and he just wants to take his mind off of work and do a little bit of driving. So while I was first really shocked about his decision to want to drive for Lyft, uh, when he has so many future career goals that are very much within uh, his sight and within his grasp, like just within reach, uh, it now makes a lot of sense to me why he wants to drive for Lyft because he has a very uh, tailored and targeted approach to doing so. 
He doesn't want to be, you know, driving all the time and losing focus on his goals, but he does want to monetize certain times when he is driving. And he does, you know, also want to take a break from uh, the day to day, the office grind, because that can be wearing. And if you're not doing other stuff in your life, uh, then, you know, that can really take a toll on you. You can hit some burnout and that can become really frustrating. So this definitely added some nice perspective on what it's like uh, to think about signing up for Lyft as a driver. A lot of people have been recommending it as a side hustle for a long time now, as opposed to a full-time thing, because full-time hours, you'll have some hours that are slow, you'll have some downtime, and you know you don't really have a ton of control over rate cuts. But when it's so easy to sign up for Lyft, and if you already have a vehicle that meets the requirements, and you know you have a, a good approach in hand and a good perspective on one of the good times to drive and how to balance this side hustle with your career goals and your life goals, it absolutely makes sense in that perspective. And I'm not knocking uh, full-time drivers because you know obviously there is uh, some need for that and people definitely choose this as a career decision, but it's important to be aware of you know what are the drawbacks to this, uh, how your rates can be cut in the future, how this can affect you financially, and you know if you're spending money up front to get into this by you know renting or buying a car how that adds up and you know really taking a look at those numbers and how they're going to add up for you so that you don't make a decision that's actually going to hurt you more financially than you expect when you're going into it you know hoping to be uh, making a lot of money driving for Lyft you know you see a lot of advertisements you see a lot of stuff out there pushing you towards Lyft getting a sign up bonus but you got to really be smart about the numbers before you hop into something like this. So if you are looking to sign up for Lyft, you can go ahead and use my referral code down below and get that sign up bonus. And if you enjoyed this content, go ahead and hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Get tons of more uh, rideshare on demand, gig economy and side hustle content coming your way.